Cheryl and Josh done broke up. <laughs> Lacey about to go fuck up her whole life and get her head knocked off her damn body with a sack of nickels by, by John. And Loke, <laughs> this is... This is to you, Loke. You done got caught with condoms in your pocket? Nigga, what? <laughs>
he said, I got to go play some goddamn poker. You know, I just got to relieve my stress. So he goes to, he told Brittany he was going to somebody's house to play poker. First, it looked like a massage parlor. I don't know. It's probably some underground bathhouse. Either way it go, that nigga about to relieve some stress, as he say. Lord, y'all. Clinton Trey said, Lord, Clinton Trey said, producers got to go to the house and check on my nigga Clinton, Lord. They go to the house, this nigga laying up in the head in the house like a broke dick dog. All the goddamn lights off. He's sitting in there in the goddamn dark. They like, what's happening now? Clinton, you five grand in the hole now? Where the bitch at? He said, look here. I went to sleep last night. Yesterday morning, I dicked it down good. Dicked it down real good. Went to sleep. I woke up. She took the car and the dog while nigga was asleep. And he ain't heard from her since. Since yesterday morning. She done got some, got some dick, the dog, and the car, and probably a credit card, and some ducats, and she done dipped the hell out. Lord, mama done told you. Mama tried to goddamn tell you. He calling and calling and calling, texting. The bitch ain't answer the phone. Finally, she called back. He asked the phone, hello? She said, motherfucker, I hate you. I hate everything about you, nigga. He's like, no, don't say that. No, I, I love you. I swear to God, I love you, goddess. I love you. She's like, motherfucker, you don't love me, Clinton. You don't love me, goddamn it. So I'm through with you. I don't want nothing else to do with you. You kiss my ass. He like, look here. I want you to want to go to therapy and do better for yourself. She said, nigga, I ain't finna do shit. Bye. Hang up the phone on this goddamn ass. Producer's like, well, what the fuck done happened, Clint? How long the bitch done been out? She only been out a week. A week. She done took this nigga dick, the dog, and the car, and some ducats, I'm sure. The dick dog ducats and the dodge. She took the four D. Uh, she took the four D's from my nigga Clint. He don't have to go back and tell mama what happened. Clint hurt. Y'all, let's put one up in the air for Clint. This nigga finna go do some shit. Oh, he finna go do some shit. Lacey and John. So Lacey still upset about Shane cheating on her before they got married. So bitch, this half a go and see John. He fixing on somebody water. He the water cooler. He fixing on something at somebody goddamn house. Cause you know the nigga got a degree in HVAC, a certificate, license. I don't know, award, ribbon, something, something like that the nigga got. But he work on water heaters or water coolers or something got to do with your goddamn house. I don't know. Shit. But he working on them. This heifer go meet her, uh, meet him at some random ass people house. She's like, oh my God, you look so good. Like, I was just so worried about you. Like, can I give you a hug? They hug. She's like, are you hearing yourself? Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, bitch, don't you give up them cookies. Number one, bitch, you're married. Number two, you in some random ass people house. Like, I know it could be exciting. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. But, bitch, you married. Like, uh, I mean, I don't know. You know, I don't know. It is what it is. So, Immediately, they sit on the couch. They all hugged up and kissing and lovey-dovey and shit. She like, I just miss you so much. Like, when I got the call and you went to jail, like, I just thought I would, like, never see you again. And I was just so sad. So, like, oh, my God, B. <laughs> so, she tells John, John, who was that? Somebody put that down in my comments. They put Jean. <laughs> she told Jean that Shane cheated on me. And like, now I just don't know if I made the right decision by marrying him. And I got his name tattooed on me. It was like a one drunk in the night. And I got it down there. John, like, bitch, you stupid. I love you. I love you with all my heart. 
And now I'm a muscle. I love you, but bitch, you stupid. You stupid, and I can't fix stupid. I can love stupid, but goddamn it, I can't fucking fix stupid, Lacey. Why the fuck you do that? She she says that, you know, now seeing John, it's making her rethink everything. And plus, whatever Shane did, now she all pissed off and she in her feelings. So, John is like, okay, so what we gonna do about this? You need to put that nigga out, because he coming up in there thinking he running shit. He ain't been working or nothing. He done got you, got, made you get his name tatted on your puss. And now all of a sudden this nigga ain't working. He's just banging your back out on your on your job, on your company time, and he reaping all kind of benefits. Oh no, this nigga got to go. I'm working. I can be your goddamn cabin saver. Ho, you don't need that nigga. Lisa said, "Bam, don't be mad. Like everybody makes some mistakes. Like I'm sorry." John said, "We gonna get rid of this nigga. That's all I need to know." Goddamn, because I'm still number one around this motherfucker, so you need to go ahead and get rid of that nigga. She's like, okay, like, we'll figure this whole thing out. Sh Lacey, what? God, listen, I done told you a couple reviews ago, this nigga, one of these niggas is gonna hurt you. They gonna put a roll of quarters in a sock and they going to knock you out. I mean, Molly, wipe the shit out you upside your damn head, girl. Or they going to take the top of your head and they going to shoot, shoot on you until you get something right. Girl, when that happened, don't say I ain't tried to tell you nothing. These niggas shake the shit out of you. Megan, Michael, and Sarah, y'all, we got Megan at the house writing song lyrics. Bitch, she on her Mary J. Blige not going to cry shit. <laughs> she done wrote a whole goddamn song, bitch. I'm not going to cry. Because you ain't going to make me shed no more tears. You know what I'm saying? She had her hair done cute. I like that. I like that, Megan. I like that what you had going on, girl. That was real damn cute, though. But she called goddamn Mike Mama because she ain't heard nothing back from Mike. She calling him, texting him. He ain't calling her back. She worried that something happened to him like he could be in jail. Not that he, not that he could be what one of these other bitches he told you that was in his phone. But you worried this nigga be in jail. Okay. She called Mike Mama. Mike Mama like, um, she said, hi, um, Mike Mama. She ain't, I forgot what the goddamn woman name is. We gonna call her Baby Fat. Wasn't she wearing a Baby Fat or a Rockaway jacket? Baby Fat jacket. But, uh, yeah, Miss Baby Fat. This is Megan. Mama say, uh. What is this bitch doing, Kyle? Okay, what, what, what you need from me, baby? She said, oh, well, I was trying to call Mike and Mike can't call me back because I don't even really want to call you like on this like this. But what happened is that Mike ain't calling me back and I don't know where he is. And so I just want to make sure he's still alive. But I'm going to say, well, baby, uh, look here. I don't know nothing about nothing about got to do with nothing about what that little nigga do with nothing that he do and how he do it with nothing he do it with. Okay. Now, if he want to call your ass, he called your ass. I haven't heard from him, but anything else, I don't know nothing, okay? You're going to have to call his ass. She said, okay, well, thank you, um, Miss Baby Fat. Um, you have a blessed day. Charge, hang up the phone. She said, I don't believe her anyway because she didn't even tell me when Mike was married. And I don't even trust nothing. She said, anyway, why, why you don't trust? That's his mama, number one. It's her job to look after and front for her son. Not that she got to lie on some shit, but look here. Why would she tell you any goddamn thing going on with what the hell her son is doing grown ass in his personal life? And you a complete stranger. You don't know her. You done talked to her. You said a couple times on the phone. You don't know that woman. She don't owe you shit. Meanwhile, you got Mike laid up in a goddamn hotel with <laughs> Senorita side chick. He telling her everything that's going on. She going to say, well, look here. She going to have to understand that mommy and daddy ain't together no more and everybody needs to play their role. Bitch, you need to play your goddamn role and stay the hell on up out of it. You don't know nothing what's going on with them people in that goddamn business. Look here. You trying to be a stepmama? Let me give you some goddamn stepmama pointers, okay? Because I'm a stepmama, all right? And look here. I've been with my husband for 13 years. What goes on with him and his, the mother of his child, when it comes to their child, I ain't got a goddamn thing. I ain't got no say. 
I ain't got no word. None of that because that's not my business. Not my business. Now, look here. If Sarah was me, I'm going to tell you because she's going to say she's going to see me. She might get a visit from me. Bitch, look here. Calm down. Slow your roll. Pump your brake. You don't, you don't, you don't want to do that. Not saying that Sarah going to two-piece you in a biscuit or nothing like that. But, bitch, look here. You need to slow your ass down and realize and recognize that you ain't even in your goddamn lane. Bitch, you swerving over into the mama lane. You ain't even a stepmama. You senorita side chick. So, you need to set that ass down. Silencio, sesenta, sesenta te por favor. Sit your goddamn ass down some goddamn where and worry about what's going on with you and your kids while you sitting up here with this big seven head ass nigga that you got in your goddamn corner with this oh oh we can't well, i'm not even finna get into mike but girl stay in your own goddamn lane so sarah decides that she wants to go to counseling to possibly work on the parenting the co-parenting between her and mike which i actually thought was a really good idea they go to counseling first of all this thing is 30 minutes late which is already a bad look on your ass they finally get in there and they talk with the counselor and Sarah is emotional because her whole thing is she lost her mother when she was 12. Shout out to you, Sarah, because I lost my mother at 27 and I felt like a little girl still when I lost her. Hurt me to my core. But um, she says that, you know, she she would hate for something to happen to her and her girls have to end up going to Mike, being that they don't know him. She says her oldest daughter, Aviana, is already, you know, sad because she's in counseling as well. I guess she must be having some behavioral issues and all of that could have a lot to do with Mike not being there and plus her seeing her mother have to go through so much doggone stress. Now, she says that Aviana is sad, and it was really sad. She was saying that when she was in counseling, she had drew a, a or they had like an emotions chart, and she circled that she was sad because she missed her daddy, and she wanted to make her daddy happy and all that. I just felt bad for her, right? Mike over there sitting to the side like, this bitch lying like a motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what she goddamn say. The counselor asked her, well, asked Mike, like, okay, so how do you feel about everything? Do you believe what's going on? He's like, no, I don't believe that. He claims that he heard her tell his girls that he doesn't love them and that he doesn't want them. Now, she didn't deny it, but she was just, immediately she got pissed off and she was done. She didn't want to talk about it no more. Whoop, whoop, yada, yada, yada. Now, look here. This is my whole issues on the thing. He got daddy issues because the counselor was able to get out of him that his daddy wasn't around and he never, you know, had a father figure growing up. So, basically, he is the resemblance of his daddy, which... Hey, you can't knock the nigga. He ain't have a perfect example to, to, to from the get-go. But she ends up telling him that she went to the lawyer, judge, whomever, and she got temporary full custody of the kids. He then decides he wants to get mad. What the fuck you mean you got custody of the kids? You won't let me get my kids and blah, 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 blah. Look here. I, I, see, I, see, I see it from both y'all's point of view. But first and foremost, y'all ain't going to ever be able to co-parent if y'all can't have a decent-ass conversation with one another. Like, that shit was getting on my nerves. She stubborn, and he dumb. Ain't neither one of them right. Ain't neither one of them, well, ain't neither one of them wrong in some aspect. Ain't neither one of them right. That's for goddamn show. But what's bad is them little girls are suffering for that. And Mikey, wrong as hell. You wrong as hell. He called himself getting mad because she got custody. Nigga, she been done had custody. Who they to live with? They ain't live with your ass. You was locked up for two years. And then the time you been out, you was creeping and sneaking with Megan. And now you with Senorita Sugar Mama, Senorita Side Chick. So what the fuck? Yeah, he, oh, he, he irritated me. He irritated me with this. Like my homeboy, my little nephew out there, Mizzle 14. Shout out to you, Mizzle 14. Call him Struggle Face. Goddamn Struggle Face. Mm, I just wanted to knock his ass out. He was getting on my goddamn nerves. Andre and Loke. <laughs> Andre had to call homegirl Stephanie. Bitch, look. I need you to come get these kids. Shit about to go down. I might have to go to jail. I got something in my savings. I even got some in my cash. I'm going to leave the card and baby girl backpack. Well, bitch, I need you to come get these kids. Because I'm going to get these fiery hands on this nigga. And the kids don't need to see this. Especially my little bust down closet baby. She don't need to see me 
putting these fiery paws on her daddy. Come get these goddamn kids. Homegirl say, bitch, I'm on the way. You already know. We down like four flats. The whole time, Tennyson can tell some shit was up. Tennyson was like, um, are we okay? What's going on with everybody? Why do we need to leave? Why do I, what happened? Lamar, did you do something? Why are you cooking us breakfast? What happened? <laughs> Child, they come get the kids. Stephanie come get the goddamn kids. She say, uh, now look here, Lamar. Nigga, I'm going to give your ass the opportunity to tell me what the hell you been up to. <laughs> Just like typical nigga shit, yes, I said it, and I don't give a damn who get mad that I said it. Typical nigga shit, what I say by typical nigga shit, I mean lie, 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 lie until you are presented with evidence in which you can no further lie about. That's what the nigga did. He said, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. She said, oh, you don't know what I'm talking about, nigga? You really don't know what the fuck I'm talking about? How about you go get the little dusty-ass jacket that your punk ass had on last night? Nigga, you make me sick. You ain't no goddamn loke. You ain't no god, Nigga, you ain't shit. Go get that little dusty-ass coat your goddamn ass had on last night. Ratch in them goddamn pockets and tell me what the hell you see. Child, this nigga go get the coat. Reach in the pocket. Pull out some two big ass magnums. I was like, oh, <laughs> Magnum. <laughs> Hi. Girl, she snapped. She started snapping on that nigga. Pa -pa 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 Going all upside his goddamn head. Child, the episode goddamn in from there. I went, Loke. Loke, what was you doing? Why you have, wait a minute. Why is them shits in that jacket though? Listen, I ain't, I ain't saying like, damn, you slipped my nigga, but damn, you slipped my, like, what the fuck? Andrea better than me. <laughs> I'd have blanket party your goddamn ass when you was on a couch sleep. Yeah, I said it and I meant it and I goddamn would do it. Anyways, if y'all seen this episode, if it was anything I missed, y'all already know. Help y'all and see y'all, go ahead and drop it down below. I love when y'all leave comments anyway. Y'all already know I answer back everybody comments because we just be kicking in them goddamn comments. Y'all is crazy. Look here. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.